hey, when did obesity get to be such an issue? You know, it wasn't when I was born in 1949. Food then was sourced from home gardens, and, and in Louisville, at the hay market on Market Street is where truck farmers brought their fruits and vegetables and flowers that they grew on a relatively small scale so they could directly sell it, sell it to the consumer. Think local, local, local. Then kitchen tables were not likely graced with foods from other counties and states, much less trucked or flown in from other countries. That means we didn't eat strawberries in the winter. We ate foods in their season and canned and froze the excess for the winter months. Then post-World War II, which is when I came in, saw the truck farmers and specialty stores, the butchers, the bakers, the cheesemakers, all these people began to consolidate into one neighborhood grocery store, like the Piggly Wiggly. The groceries were small, not these warehouse-sized stores today. Um, and I remember there were four walls. One was lined with fresh produce, and another was the butcher, and the other was dairy and, and bakery. Um, and there were platforms in the center of the store stacked with canned goods and frozen vegetables. Came a little later. I think frozen big freezers were expensive for little stores, but eventually they came. Then in the 1980s, government began to publicize dietary guidelines for Americans and have since become the cornerstone of the federal food and nutritional guidance for all of our institutions. And obesity rates have soared. There's the chart. There's a great deal of history, and we can learn from it, and especially with food ways. And while there have been wonderful advancements, no matter how well-meaning they are, we have lost something in today's enriched and supersized food system. We, too, are supersized as we become disconnected from the ground. So take heart. For all that was is still there and can be accessed again by each of us in the home garden and the small farms supplying the meat, the dairy, the bread and produce. So let's begin with one foot planted in what once was that nourished us and the other foot in the improved food production and scientific advancements that have happened in nutrition. And I say we have little choice to do this because Remember, only 6.8% of Americans are metabolically fit, and we have the staggeringly high doctor bills to prove it, and we're more susceptible to communicable and chronic diseases than we've ever been. So let's seek the old paths for the joy of it, for ourselves, and mostly for the health and vitality of our children and grandchildren.